Welcome back. Some businesses in Los Olivos are scratching their heads after a rash of burglaries this week. Attorneys offices and realtors were targeted. KSBY's Melissa Newman is live in Los Olivos where a fifth business was just burglarized. Melissa. Hey Dave, busy day in politics. We need to move these polling places to the beach, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> wow, a really interesting day. It was clear for a long time out of the beach and then through a public act records request, I found out more than 120 people have been booked in the San Luis Obispo County Jail more than 10 times over the last two years. That's 125 people getting arrested over and over and over again. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for the news at five. I'm Scott Daniels. Karina Corral has the night off and we want to begin with a live look outside again from our sky cam overlooking beautiful San Luis Obispo. Right now, things are looking OK. Chief Meteorologist Dave Hovde is here. Shark issues here. Some beaches in Australia are closed after four sharks trailed a fisherman's boat, and it was, of course, all caught on camera. I'm getting old saying that, right? All caught on camera. <laughs> Everything's caught on camera this day. So this is not what you want to see when you're out in the water. It happened yesterday off the coast of Perth. A fisherman recorded the video. It shows the sharks just following him, looking for a snack. Thanks for joining us for the news tonight. I'm Scott Daniels. We have full coverage of Hurricane Florence tonight as it lashes across the eastern seaboard. Jay Gray reporting live. Be safe out there, Jay. Thank you very much. Tonight we are hearing from a local strike team that's helping with the relief efforts on the east coast as Hurricane Florence rolls in. The team left from Santa Barbara with so much damage before the storm even makes landfall. The question on everyone's mind is what's next? Chief Meteorologist Dave Hubby has been tracking Hurricane Florence and has the very latest. Hey, Dave. News Decision 2018. Candidates for Arroyo Grande City Council are getting ready for the general election. They met with voters tonight. KS Boy News reporter Dustin Kleeman was there. He joins us live in the newsroom. The regular season winding down. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jessica Vo. Appreciate it. Still ahead. While here on the Central Coast, we're talking donuts and scooters. On the East Coast, they're talking hurricanes. Yeah. And All right. And college football on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Very yep. fun. Love it. Thank you, Jessica. A teenager in Santa Barbara is teaching us all a thing or two about being a good Samaritan. And Brooke, you said you haven't been to Slow Brew Rock yet. I have not. I need to go. It's new. Uh, my only time going there was to film the commercial That's for right. KSBY, but it's a fun venue and uh, yeah, I can it's tell. a local staple. Thanks for joining us for the news at six. I'm Scott Daniels. Places that normally would be bustling are now deserted. The only people flying into the airport in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, are emergency crews who are being called in to help. Airlines have canceled more than 1700 flights on the East Coast. Hub airports like Charlotte and Raleigh are also preparing for huge disruptions in air travel. Major airlines like United American and Delta are allowing people in affected areas to change their plans. Millions of people are in the path of the storm, as well as a lot of key infrastructure. So far, at least 80,000 customers are without power in North Carolina. A utility company in Greenville, North Carolina, is using a temporary dike filled with water to keep a substation from flooding. At least six nuclear power plants are in the area, though utility companies are reassuring people that they are prepared to weather the storm. We've got Chief Meteorologist Dave Hovde taking a look at this storm. Dave, you've been tracking this for more than a week now. We have a follow-up now on a Santa Maria man accused of accidentally shooting and killing his younger brother. 19-year-old Fernando Navarro pleaded guilty today to shooting after initially pleading not guilty. Navarro was arrested in February after his 13-year-old brother, Leonardo, was killed. The DA's office says as part of the agreement, Navarro is expected to be sentenced to three years in prison and one year and eight months of community supervision. His sentencing is set for October 4th. San Luis Obispo police are looking for a 28 year old at risk man. Concerned family members reported Spencer Vander Hayden missing earlier today. Police say due to the circumstances surrounding his disappearance, he is considered at risk. If you have any information about his whereabouts, you are urged to call police. One year after a Santa Maria man nearly died in a motorcycle crash on Stowell and Broadway, he's ready to start the quarter at Cal Poly. KSB News reporter Asia Gore. Joins us live now in the studio with more on his long road to recovery, Asia. We wish him the best. What an inspiration. Thank you, Asia. Flores has to undergo one more surgery on his hand over the next year. Back to more coverage of Hurricane Florence. Here's a live look at Surf City, North Carolina, where people are already seeing strong winds, heavy rain and flooding. Millions of people are in the path of Hurricane Florence. The two largest utility companies in North Carolina say at least 80,000 people are without power tonight. 
the Federal Emergency Management Agency is reassuring people that it's prepared for the worst. We will have more on the government's response coming up at 630 and we will check in again with Chief Meteorologist Dave Hovde for the full forecast in just a few minutes. Leaders in San Luis Obispo stopped a surprise plan from the company Bird to launch scooters in the city today. Mayor Heidi Harmon says the city was tipped off about the company's guerrilla style campaign and denied approval. The city says it has plans to meet with the company Tuesday. Santa Barbara City Council approved a pilot program of the scooters back in June. And you can always get the latest local headlines anytime at KSBY.com on the KSBY News app and on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Right now we are still tracking the effects of Hurricane Florence. Millions of people are in the path of the storm. Coastal areas are already seeing strong winds and heavy rain. Here's a live look right now in Surf City, North Carolina. We will check in with Chief Meteorologist Dave Hovde for the forecast in just a bit. Meantime, President Trump is escalating his pushback against criticism that he botched the response to Hurricane Maria last year. He's claiming that the 3,000 people didn't die in Puerto Rico last year. NBC's Blaine Alexander reports from Washington. The president was briefed again today by emergency officials and promised the government is supplied and ready. In news across California, sheriff's deputies have identified the victims and gunmen in a shooting rampage in Bakersfield. The Kern County Sheriff's Office says 54-year-old Javier Caceres killed five people in a shooting spree yesterday morning before killing himself. It's still not clear yet why he went on that rampage. One of the victims was his ex-wife. Court documents show their divorce became final in April. Deputies are still trying to figure out if there's any relationship between the gunman and his other victims. A Holocaust denier group is buying ads on BART trains in the Bay Area, and the transit agency says it can't do anything to stop it. A 10-second ad now appears on video monitors and some stations. It promotes a group that publishes factually incorrect books and articles that deny the Holocaust. Many writers are upset that BART allowed the ad to run on its platform. BART says it's a government agency and it's required to carry ads under free speech laws.